So I lost my mom. Um, she was 31 and I was five. So I always live in that kind of fear of what ifs. You have to be organized um, to be a medical parent. There's just so much, so many doctor's appointments, uh, so many different things that have to be ordered by different people, different companies. It's overwhelming 99.9% .9 of the time. No one knows how to take care of them like I do. No one knows everything. I'm the only one that does his dressing changes because I think it's consistency. I'm his caregiver. So if I'm not here, I'm afraid to know what will happen. Riker was born with gastroschisis, where that's when the intestines and sometimes other organs are on the outside of the body. Um, when Riker was born by emergency C-section, over 75% of those intestines were dead. Um, so they cut that, um, and then it went from gastroschisis, which is a birth defect, to a life-threatening disease, which um, is short gut, is what he has, short bowel syndrome. Um, with that, his intestines are so short, they can't grab nutrients from food like we can. It kind of affects everything. Um, when you have to live off TPN, it damages other organs and stuff like that. Since Riker was born, um, he's lived fully off TPN. It used to be 24 hours a day, and we're down to 15. Um, he's had 27 surgeries, nine blood transfusions, and we've traveled to Boston every eight weeks since he was 11 months old, and he's seven now. And then when he gets hooked up, it runs out the top, and it's pretty good. Roll it around. Keep all the extra pumps. We get everything double in case something goes out. This is the um, typically daily meds. This one's dressing changes. We have to do it once a week, like a little procedure that you have to do. This is all G tube related, and this is all lab work stuff. So I do his lab work. You need every size of syringe there is in this world. I got you. Um, this is our traveling one, so it already has a dressing change kit ready it already has extra days it also has the backup pumps and then i also have the medical list or the medicine list that he's currently on and i keep updated where did they leave did they go bye bye for a little bit yeah they said to be back in diego in 20 minutes but they they go they will be back in like seven I don't know. I he is an average seven-year-old child. He's delayed in some areas and he has wires hanging from him, but without them wires, you wouldn't know any different. He bounces off the walls just like any other seven-year-old boy. <laughs> so, I mean, it's it's a challenge. We were we came into this world and had an idea of what we wanted to be when we grew up, and then it was completely turned around and our lives were flipped and we got told what we were gonna do for the rest of our lives. It's definitely one of those you don't understand until you go through it moments. We're all on the same world and we're just looking through different glasses. And the medical parents' glasses are much different than the, the typical person's. You don't understand until it's yourself. And knowing that there are the other parents out there that have that feeling too. Kind of a closure, because um, the depression and stuff like that, the seclusion, like you not to be around other people. Um, it is helpful to know that there are other people they may not have the same challenges, but they have a challenge. All right, bub, come over here and grab your line. Show them how you work it. Yeah, I mean, I've known about Wish Those Little Heroes and been a part of it um, socially, but not physically. Um, because I was so far away. But I was always invited to the events. They know we're from here. Um, so they've always welcomed us with open arms. I've, we went to the birthday parties. We became more than just parents that are in a Wish Charles Lewis Heroes group. We've become friends, a family. Um, when I'm at the hospital with Riker, they'll reach out. Can I bring you anything? So there's a lot of things that have been extremely helpful when it comes to um, becoming friends and family with these people. To know that there's out there that can support you and lift you up, and it's a great community. They offer amazing things for um, the parents, including obviously the children. Um, it's just a great organization overall. I've helped people print off their stuff and send it to them if they don't have a printer to make it easier. Because um, I think it's that great, that if you can't get a printer, I'll help you get the paperwork so that you can also be a part of it, because it's well worth it. The heroes would benefit the most from the, the gatherings. Um, it really touched me last time um, when he was 
very adamant thinking that he was the only person with a line and that he was able to see not one but two other little kids that have a line. And then um, he came back home that evening and was like, you know, it's I'm really not the only one in the city. Because that was his thing is, I'm the only one in the city that's like this. He just thinks that only Boston has those kids. That meant a lot just to make my kid feel normal because he knows he's not. But when they seen Riker and how like open he is, they're like, oh, okay, well, maybe we can be a little bit more open too. And they're like, like showing theirs just a little bit. Um, Riker's become very open with his uh, line within the last, I'm gonna say the last year. It used to be he would hide it and he was embarrassed of it. Um, now he kind of just owns it. So we were at a restaurant yesterday and someone even said something. Something about steak and said, do you want, you want to eat steak? And he's like, no, I don't eat. And he's like, what do you mean you don't eat? And he just lifted up his shirt. He said, see, I just live off a line. And I was like, I love to see that he's got to that point where he's not ashamed of his body and the things that he's been through, so. And Wish Shells Little Heroes, I think, has a huge part in that because it's making my child feel like he can be himself and that he's not the only one that's different.